Good morning, my dear students. So, yesterday we have seen uh, the basic concept of autonomic nervous system, especially the physiology part, like uh, what are the components of autonomic nervous system, what is the importance, uh, what is the origin, neurotransmitter and in synthesis, uh, uh, storage, release, termination and all. And I also told you something like, uh, it's like a brake and an accelerator of a vehicle. One, in most of the time, one can uh, increase the activity and the other can stop it or reduce. Exceptions are there. So, for example, salivary glands, both uh, uh, cholinergic and uh, adrenergic system may have an increased uh, uh, salivary secretion. So, exceptions are always there. Fine. Now, today, let's start with the adrenergic pharmacology. So, it is named as adrenergic pharmacology, but still, to discuss the pharmacological aspects, uh, you have to uh, understand the basic concept of the physiology, if the physiological part of the adrenergic nervous system. So, at the end of this uh, presentation, uh, you will be understanding like uh, uh, what is the importance of these uh, catecholamines, uh, like what are the neurotransmitters of the or, or sym sympathetic nervous system or the adrenergic uh, nervous system. Yesterday, I have told you uh, symp uh, sympathetic nervous system. It's also called the uh, adrenergic nervous system and uh, thoracolumbar nervous system. So, you know well why these nomenclature, like what is the basis of this nomenclature. We have discussed in detail. Fine. So, definitely when uh, the neurotransmitters is considered as, neurotransmitter is considered as the basic component, you have to understand the basic concept. Right? Though we have discussed yesterday, let us have a recap. This is the upper part of an axon, axon where he, here you have a, a aromatic amino acid transporter. Again, this is a symport where the sodium is also taken into the axoplasm. Tyrosine is taken because it's present outside the axoplasm. Inside the axoplasm, the tyrosine gets converted into L-dopa. We have seen a steroid. Okay. Tyrosine hydroxylase is the enzyme responsible. Yeah, here you go. This picture, all right. Now, referencing this is the alpha 2 receptor, and this alpha receptor is called uh, autoreceptor, presynaptic autoreceptor, because it is involved in the regulation of norepinephrine release. So, I just mentioned that alpha 2 receptor inhibit the release of norepinephrine, and this is how uh, this autoreceptor can inhibit release of further release of norepinephrine. All right, so this is. This is what I wanted to tell you. you know. In vascular smooth muscle, it causes contraction. Again, the alpha 1 also produces uh, blood vessel constriction. So, this is uh, only GI and GO. These two are the in transducer type of G protein couplings. Now, moving on to the second type of receptor that's a beta receptor. And I told you there are three types of beta receptor beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. As of now, uh, beta 1 and beta 2 are pharmacologically relevant. Beta 3 doesn't have any pharmacological implication. So, we don't emphasize on beta 3 receptors much. Let's see where you find beta 1 receptor. The most important area where you find beta 1 receptor is heart. Heart is the principal site where you can see beta 1 receptor and what are the effects. And I told you that it can increase your heart rate and stroke volume, cardiac output, it, uh, AV conduction, all these processes will be absolutely increased by the stimulation of beta 1 receptor. So, please remember that uh, it can increase the cardiac contractility and cardiac conduction, the positive uh, chronotropic effect and inotropic effect. Next is uh, renal dextroglomerular cells and you know that this is a cells, specialized cells which can have sensing capacity uh, where uh, it can causes renin secretion and you know the role of renin it's a uh, you can consider as a hormone and this is responsible for the activation of renin angiotensin the system a renal uh, ways of your blood pressure control right on the eye uh, it can have an uh, increased hacker's humor production where it is responsible for maintenance of your 
maintenance of your uh, intraocular pressure and you know that uh, increased intraocular pressure eventually leads to glaucoma and uh, uh, impairment of the vision right so these are the major area of uh, areas of beta 1 receptors and here uh, this is a gs g protein coupled receptors gs and i hope you will go back to the receptor pharmacology and what is gs what is gq and all that part also. now moving on to the G beta 2 adeno receptors uh, this is mainly located on the smooth muscles so when i say smooth muscles you have uh, different types of smooth muscle and here the predominant smooth muscles are bronchial smooth muscles so there it causes bronchodilatation and you have seen many people use salbutamol uh, very common brand names astaline in bronchial asthma and also uh, tracheobronchial uh, congestion uh, sometimes in COPD the cro uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and what is the basis of this use simple as that it provides symptomatic improvement because it produces uh, bronchodilatation uh, so that the person can easily breathe all right and vascular smooth muscle it causes relaxation vasodilatation that's why i told you sympathetic nerve system can modulate the tone of the blood vessels uh, alpha 1 receptors cause alpha 1 and alpha 2 cause uh, vasoconstriction and beta 2 causes mainly causes vasodilatation now again the location this is mainly on the uh, mainly on the uh, blood vessels supply to the muscles skeletal muscles all right and gi also it produce especially the intestine it produce uh, relaxation whereas the alpha 1 and alpha 2 produce constriction you remember that all right and uterus of course it produce uterine relaxation in fact it is uh, apl uh, applied in various condition in obstetrics and especially in obstetrics and in liver again uh, it can promote glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis the same way how alpha 1 receptors promote this process and i told you uh, glycogenolysis as a process which takes place both in liver and muscles and in the muscle it again promote glycogenolysis and uh, potassium uptake okay so generally you can uh, read this part it can promote it can increase potassium uptake and as a result it can causes it can causes hypokalemia as an adverse effect hypokalemia as an adverse effect and the signaling transducer mechanism is gs now uh, like uh, 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 these receptors are planned or framed such a way that uh, stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system make a person to uh, fight or fly you remember the term fight or fly uh, uh, more details we'll discuss when we discuss about the, uh, about the next class now beta 3 is mainly located on the adipose tissues and it causes glycolysis and i told you beta 3 access doesn't have much uh, pharmacological implication though uh, few days a few a few years back we used to have some of the drugs used for the weight loss through lipolysis process now it has a lot of adverse effects and no longer recommended and beta 3 receptors are gs again gs okay now how do you regulate these receptors i told you this is actually uh, uh, we have seen that this is a sort of g protein coupled receptors and how do you regulate this receptor uh, when we discuss about the g protein coupled receptor regulation uh, we have seen that up regulation and down regulation up regulation usually takes place when these receptors are continue uh, continuously blocked for a long period with a blocker and uh, the ability of receptor agonist to initiate downstream signaling is proportional to the number of receptors activated so as the as more number of receptors are activated accordingly changes in the density of receptors on the cell surface will alter the apparent efficiency of an agonist see when agonist quantity is less uh, it can somehow regulate by increasing the number of receptors and if the agonist quantity is more uh, there will be a down regulation of the receptors both in the transducer function as well as in the number of receptors and it's called down regulation 
So the short term de desensitization and long term derm regulation. Changes in the number of functional adenoreceptors are important in regulating tissue. So something like uh, with the example of uh, salbutamol in asthma. See, when a person regularly take a large quantity of uh, salbutamol prophylactically, gradually what happens? The response to the salbutamol comes down because uh, as a, lo a long term down regulation process takes place. That's called down regulation, and this is a major or the principal pathway uh, for the regulation of the receptors. So thank you. And before winding up, I just wanted to uh, recap like what are the things we have learned. We have uh, seen uh, synthesis of the adenaline, noradenaline, and dopamine, and its storage, release, uh, metabolism. Okay, and uh, reuptake pet pathway and role of cocaine, the indirectly acting sympathomimetic cocaine. And we have seen like uh, uh, receptors of various type of receptors. We have seen the alpha receptors and beta receptors, its location and uh, what will happen uh, if the each receptor. And I told you at the end, I told you these uh, receptors, this nerve system basically prepare a person for the uh, fight or flight response. And uh, finally, we have discussed the regulation of the receptors by down regulation and desensitization process. So the short term process is called desensitization by uh, reducing the number of expression of the receptors on the cell, cell surface and the long term mechanism is actually down regulation and it's a genetical level and it causes reduce the uh, downstream like especially the transducer mechanism. So with this I just wanted to tell you we have uh, finished the first part of the sympathetic pha autonomic pharmacology, not autonomic pharmacology, the adrenergic pharmacology will continue uh, in the in next class. So fine, as usual, like please uh, read this topic and if you have any query, you can ask personally or you can put some comment. And at the end of this, uh, please uh, answer roll call by commenting your name and register number. Thank you.